Welcome to Tickmail Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 12th of October with me, Patrick Munley. Dollar goes into Monday's US Columbus daily public holiday, uh, slightly off it. Supporting risk assets and pressuring the dollar seem to be the hopes for fresh US fiscal stimulus and investors settling into the view that the presidential election outcome will not be contested. I don't expect these views to be challenged too harshly in the week ahead since the second presidential TV debate looks to be delayed and neither party in Congress wants to be seen killing stimulus prospects. US data this week comes in the form of NFIB small business optimism, retail sales, industrial production and consumer sentiments, which should all be relatively supportive of risk assets. One challenge to the modestly upbeat sentiment may come from the IMF autumn meetings, which start in Washington on Monday. Closely followed World Economic Outlook is released on Tuesday, and we'll see an update of the IMF's world growth forecast. Currently, minus 4.9% in 2020 and plus 5.4% in 2021. Whilst we may see a modest upgrade to the 2020 number, I expect more focus to be on the downside risk to the 2021 figure based on second wave challenges. A concerted push for fresh fiscal stimulus from central bank speakers looks likely too. Also note that US equities will take their cue from the start of third quarter earnings releases from the US banks. The big question is how these institutions handle some of the aggressive provisioning made in the second quarter and could possibly see some positive surprises. From a technical perspective, dollar index is trading in a relatively well-defined five-wave pattern. We have the fourth wave complete at the ideal 9450 area, which is an equality objective and a symmetry swing resistance zone, and the descending trend line resistance. We traded down to test ascending trend line support, got a bullish reversal last week, and it looked like we may see prices move higher. That, uh, that candle was invalidated, and we closed uh, on the weak side on Friday. If we can get down through this 9260, 9250 area, then I see the uh, Potential that we trade lower to complete the five-way pattern, looking for a test of the 90 handle. However, if we do see some bullish reversal patterns develop in this 9270, there's still the potential that we get a move up to test 9450, although that's not the base case at this point. Uh, the euro has stayed relatively supported despite much verbal intervention from the ECB. Obviously, very low inflation with core at 0.2% year over year. Gives ECB good cause for concern over euro strength, but broader global factors are at play here. The euro is indeed participating in the global reflation story, steeper yield curves, particularly in the US, and it will probably take a loss of confidence in the global recovery rather than the ECB rhetoric to turn the euro materially lower. Apart from the EU summit on Thursday, which in addition to Brexit could look at fresh sanctions on Russia and Turkey. It does not look like there's enough macro data to give oxygen to ECB Lagarde's fears of a double dip. The only data of note in the Eurozone is the German ZEW, and the more important October PMIs are not released until the following week. Instead, the biggest challenge probably comes from whether European lockdowns broaden. Uh, Israel is the only country to see a second national lockdown at this point. So from a technical perspective, obviously inverse to the dollar index, we have a potential wave for low in place for the euro. Uh, one area of interest is the equality objective versus this current structure, which is this uh, 119.15. Want to pay attention how prices trade there. We've got a bunch of prior highs there. So this could uh, this area could prove sticky. However, if we overcome this 119.50, then I'm looking for a fifth wave to complete into the ideal 121.16, which is also the equality objective versus the initial move off the lows. So look for that 121 area as we hold 116 as our support. Now in the uh, UK, all eyes are on the EU summit Thursday and Friday and Boris Johnson's self-imposed 15th of October deadline for the negotiations. I expect the deadline to be breached and negotiations to continue until the end of October, early November. There's not enough sufficient progress has been made. Still, for the UK government to justify the breach of the deadline, both sides are likely to claim that some progress has been made and hence negotiations continue beyond, ne beyond next week. Such a relatively constructive message should be positive for Sterling. Still, this does not mean that the end of sterling volatility and the two-way price action in weeks thereafter. 
as negotiations will remain tough and the news flow may turn negative again, even if temporarily and even if the deal is eventually reached. On well, the data front, the focus is on the employment data Tuesday. UK employment rate uh, shows another slow uptick uh, as the forthcoming end to the furlough scheme continues to add pressure on the labour market. But yet again, the domestic data will probably play second fiddle to the importance of the UK-EU trade negotiations. So from a technical perspective, a sterling uh, trades above 130. I'm now looking for a test of the 132 area. We could see a pullback from here, but if we clear 132, then look for a retest of price cycle highs at 134.90. Only a close now below this 127.70 uh, area would put the bullish thesis uh, under pressure. Uh, dollar yen really remains beholden to the US yield curve dynamics and the reflation story, especially so since uh, one, the US economy has been performing well, and two, the US looks the closest to receiving fresh large scale fiscal stimulus. Assuming neither side nixes the chance of fresh stimulus, uh, look for a little more uh, US curve steepening, which should support the dollar yen with the front end of the US uh, curve anchored, particularly focused on the 1030 year curve, now at the steepest level for a year. The nine weeks on the data front should keep uh, JPY within its current ranges. Um, and from a technical perspective, the dollar yen uh, held its equality objective here at the 105.90. And we did get a bearish reversal pattern on Friday, which has taken the daily VWAP uh, bearish. If we get some follow through sell selling, early in the week and take out the monthly pivot at 105.30, then I'd look for a retest of 104. And last but not least, the, in Australia, I think expectations around further Reserve Bank of Australia easing are probably overdone, and the latest policy statement aimed at stressing the centrality of the jobs market for future policy decisions, rather than signalling an imminent cut. So next week, will likely be key in directing monetary expectations with two market moving events in focus. Employment data is due on Thursday, and I suspect that the consensus is too much on the pessimistic side, expecting the employment rate to edge above 7%, and there could be scope for an upside surprise from there. Uh, the other event is the speech by RBA Governor Lowe on Wednesday. Still given that the speech is before the release of the jobs figures, there's possibility Lowe will not change his rhetoric just yet. As usual, markets will also be on the lookout for currency-related comments to track any possible change in the so far very relaxed stance of the RBAs to the Aussie strength. All in all, expect, all in all, expect the potential for some scale down in the market's dovish expectations around the RBA, and therefore there could be some room for some Aussie idiosyncratic outperformance next week. Uh, from a technical perspective, whilst we hold this 7090 level, I'm looking for a test of the equality objective, uh, 7295, which is also the underside of this um, prior ascending trend channel. We also have the 78.6% retracement coming in at 73.20. From there, we could see a pullback back to the 72 area, but whilst we trade above this swing point at 71, I'd be looking for a retest of the prior cycle highs up to 74.12. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for the week commencing the 12th of October. As always, join me on Thursdays at 1pm for live market analysis. Thanks very much and have a great week.